Hey, this is Evan Hutchison, and today I want to go over accounting theory, which is uh, not the most fascinating subject to most people, but if you understand the theory behind accounting, I think you can understand bookkeeping at a very fundamental level, which will allow you to make adjustments and do other things to your books to make them work and to make them accurate. So bookkeeping, it's, it's pretty daunting to a lot of people. And the thing that throws most people off, it seems at least, is the understanding of debits and credits, which is the very basic part of bookkeeping. And if you don't understand the debits and credits, and I understand they can be confusing, if you don't understand them, then uh, you ha you're handicapped right there at the beginning in understanding bookkeeping. So I'm gonna try to kind of show you what why accounting was made, why debits and credits were made, the theory behind the double entry bookkeeping system. And if you can understand this, you'll be ahead of probably 95% of other people who aren't, who aren't accountants or CPAs, but who want to run their practice. And you'll be ahead of a lot of accountants in general, because still there's just so many people that just don't get the concepts behind this. So the first thing to know is debits always equal credits. So the total debits in a set of books will always equal the total credits. And as a result, there will inevitably be, be a constant equality between the equity accounts and, the, um, and all the other accounts. So this is an example of a balance sheet right here. And here are the assets, here are the liabilities, the assets are debits, the liabilities and the equity are credits. And the assets equal liabilities plus equity. So in this case, at total assets equals total liability, and total liability or equity, which they didn't add up for some reason, but it totals 11,320, just like the assets. So that's actually not a complete balance sheet because usually it has, it should have a total and that's what Balances. So here is another balance sheet. Total assets are 101,000. Total liabilities and net worth are 101,000. Net worth is kind of another word for equity. There's a lot of words for a lot of these different accounts. Um, but this is the gist of it. These are debits, these assets, these liabilities, and, and net worth are credits. And I'll go over this in a little more detail in a second. Um, basically, the assets are, I mean this, the debits and the credits are, it's, it's a science, it's not an art, it's not an invention, it's not just something that somebody created, it makes perfect sense and that's why it was created. So it's a science and that's why it's, I think it's really important to understand it. So one way to look at it, assets are what you have and what you are expected to receive. So my assets are what I have and what I trust to receive. My liabilities are what I owe. My equity is what I am worth. So what I have and what I trust to receive equals what I owe plus what I am worth. If you trust nobody and you owe money to nobody, then you're worth all that you have. So the equation can be simplified into what I have equals what I am worth. But when you start throwing in a credit or debtors and creditors, then it becomes a little more complicated and that's where the typical balance sheet is today. That's what this is. So the, um, the books, if they're, not, if they're not kept, if the books aren't accurate and up to date, then we're not preserving that equation. And if we're not preserving that equation, we must go through each one of these and figure out what the correct balance is. This equity we won't know until the very end. We're not gonna know the equity if we don't know these other accounts, and we can't find the equity without finding the assets and the liabilities. So the first thing you wanna do is examine all the asset accounts, all the liability accounts, and a lot of people have to do that when their books are not in order. But if you get things going at the beginning and you keep things right moving forward, you won't have to do that. At any point in time, you should be able to look at your balance sheet and figure out what your, what your equity is. 
the um, well, let's just say, for example, let's say I don't have anything on the balance sheet at all. And here's some other balance sheets as well that show you more asset accounts, more liability accounts, more equity accounts. The, um, these are not very good examples, and I apologize because they don't show the total. So here's total equity and total, total liabilities and total equity of 305 and total assets of 305, and they're broken down into sub-accounts. But let's just go out of, uh, let's take a very simple example. Um, let's say I have, let's say I don't even have a business yet. I just start a business. I take out, uh, I take out a loan for $20,000 to start the business. Right after I take that loan out, so before I take the loan out, my balance sheet is zero. After I take the loan out, my cash is 20,000 and my liabilities are 20,000 and my equity is zero. I'm taking a loan, so I have no equity, but I have cash. So 20K of assets, 20K of liabilities, zero of equity. Um, because how could I have equity? That's a loan, that's not any, I'm not worth any more by taking out money. Um, on the other hand, if a client paid me, let's say I did some services and the client paid me $20,000, then I have $20,000 of cash just like before, but instead of a $20,000 liability, I have $20,000 of equity. And how we look at that, we break it down a little bit more. We break down the uh, profit and loss statement and the balance sheet. So really, the balance sheet is the full, you can look at the balance sheet and see everything. The profit and loss statement is a breakdown of a portion of your equity. So here's an example. I just threw this financial statement together. So here's a balance sheet and here's a profit and loss, right? And your profit, and this is of course a very simplified version, your profit and loss, when people want to look at your financials, they want to look at your P&L and your balance sheet. But really, your P&L can be condensed onto the balance sheet, and it is condensed onto the balance sheet. So if you look at your profit and loss statement here, you have income of 153000 net income of 18500 after you subtract out the expenses. That 18500 is a part of equity. So if you go up here to the balance sheet, the net income is added to your equity. So your balance sheet is really a full picture of your business. It shows how much you're at, how much you're worth based on your assets, your liabilities, and your equity. Your equity is money you put in, money you took out, and your net income over the years. So you still, you know, there's of course an investor or yourself, if you're, do, if you're trying to manage your business or the IRS, they're gonna wanna see your profit and loss because that's what you're paying taxes on. But at the end of the day, the bottom line of the profit and loss is really just a segment of your equity. So, um, if you take my previous example of 20K, let's just blow this all up. Let's say 20K cash came in and a 20K debt came in. What I said at the very, at the very beginning, the first example. This is what the balance sheet would look like. Twenty thousand equals twenty thousand. Balance sheet balances. But if you remove this twenty thousand and say we take my second example into account and say you have twenty thousand dollars of income. You received twenty thousand of income, or of yeah, of sales, and you had no expenses. It was just all services that you provided. You'll show twenty thousand of profit and loss net income, and then that will carry up to the equity. And a big, a, a major thing you want to remember is the debits and the credits part of it. 
So like I said, the debits are assets, the credits are liabilities and equity. If you think about that, the way it, the reason it works is because what's what's a what do you consider a good thing, an asset or a liability? Of course, an asset. Your assets are debits. Your liabilities are credits. Credits or liabilities are bad. Assets are good. Debits are good. Credits are bad. But then you get down to equity. Credits are good and debits are bad. So that's how it balances. I know that doesn't make much sense, but if you if if you have 20k of cash because you put 20k in as a contribution, then your your um, journal entry, you know how you put the money in the books, is a debit to cash because cash is assets, debits, assets equals debits, and then a good equity is a credit. So the contribution, the equity contribution, would be a credit. And that's how debits always equal credits. You put 20K right here as a credit. Well, we said 20,000. And let's just call this equity contribution. And this is a credit of 20,000. And that gets plugged into the balance sheet over here. So that would be, you would increase the equity right here, you would increase the debit right there. So debits increase assets, credits increase liabilities, credits increase equity. So the credit would increase equity. What if we took cash out? If we took cash out, let's say we took five grand out after we just put in 20 grand because we decided we needed five grand. We would, to decrease an asset, we would credit it. So we would credit cash five grand to decrease an equity account, we would, we would uh, debit it. So it would be as simple as that. When that gets pushed into the system, that decreases. And of course, you're not doing your financials by hand. You're doing it in a system. So when you, let's just say we're using QuickBooks Online and we um, input this into the system, it automatically will move will shift cash down five grand and shift um, equity down five grand. And then on the revenue side and the, oh, the profit and loss side, remember the profit and loss is really an extension of equity. So credits are still good for the profit and loss and debits are bad. So revenue is credited, uh, expenses are debited. So if you, if you, well, here's a per perfect example. Let's say you received, you sold something for $1,500. Your sales, that's a good, that's a revenue item. You're increasing your sales by $1,500 by crediting it, because remember it's an extension of equity and good equity is credits. And then good assets or debits, you're increasing your asset of accounts receivable by $1,500. So let's just say you did that. This 20,000 that you've already incurred, now you've incurred 1,500 more dollars. So this would be 21,500. This 21,500 would be, would come up here to 21,500. And then your, well, I'm all, I'm all backwards now, so I didn't, I've skipped a few steps. But let's say he puts 15 grand in and then he, receives 20 grand, well, yeah, from my second example, he receives $20,000, and that is um, now cash. So he's got 15 that he put in, he received 20,000, now he's got 35,000. Now, he's also uh, incurred, but he has not received yet, 1,500 of income. So this 20,000 of income changes to 21,500, so now our net income is 21.5, which moves up to the balance sheet at 21.5, and the accounts receivable is 1,500. So our assets are 36.5, and our liabilities and equity are 36.5. So some of this might seem, I think the, one of the main reasons it becomes complicated is because somebody sees why you're doing a debit and why you're doing a credit, and it just doesn't seem like it makes sense, or maybe it seems arbitrary. And that's what causes the confusion. So if you can understand that this is necessary and 
every time you input a transaction into the books, you're doing a debit and a credit. You could do multiple transactions or multiple accounts. You could do um, office expense for three hundred and fifty dollars, accounts payable for two hundred and fifty, but we made a down pay. We paid a hundred dollars of that office expense, so that would simply just be office expense debit 350 accounts payable credit 250 and cash credit one so it's the total is always going to the total debits are always going to equal the total credits and it's that's just how it works there's a science behind it just know that so if you understand that debits have to equal credits and you know that there's a reason behind it and i think it will make it a little more a little easier to understand the why and if you can understand the why then even when QuickBooks or whatever software you might be using is taking care of most of this for you, you can go in and review the books and you're going to have to make changes. When you start doing your, when you start looking at your accounting and you're in control of your accounting, you'll see that there's some adjustments that you might need to make at some point in time. And that's when it's good to understand this. So let's just throw out a really quick example. Let's say that you receive, this business received some of the PPP COVID money of $5,000. And it's, and the, the bookkeeper originally put it towards income. So we put five grand towards income. So what does that do here? That changes this number to 26.5. Um, that changes cash to an extra $5,000. So this is what your balance sheet currently looks like, 41.5 and 41.5. Then let's say, oh wait, we realize we should put this as a loan for now, even though it'll probably be forgivable, uh, we're gonna put it in as a loan, just because technically it's a loan right now. So we could do, a, we could go about it a few different ways. We could find that transaction and just change the, change the account, or you can do it like you can just create a journal entry. And a journal entry would be your removing income and you're adding a loan. So remember to, income is a credit. Income is credited to increase income. We're decreasing income, so we would debit it. And if you know that and you know increasing a liability is crediting a liability, you can simply do this journal entry right here and then that will, in turn, in the books, decrease this income by 5,000 and increase this loan by 5,000. So that's just one small example. Of course, you can go into that transaction and change it on your own, but I guarantee you there's gonna be reasons where you will wanna make journal entries, like maybe at the end of the month, you can't, you wanna make some adjustments to principal and interest. You wanna make some adjustments to who paid what in as equity. And there's all sorts, you know, the list goes on. There's I'm doing, I do accounting for, um, for hundreds of businesses. I don't do the bookkeeping anymore, but I, I do the consulting. And every time I deal with any business, there's always some sort of journal entry that they should be doing in order to get the books right on a monthly basis. So just understanding this will hopefully help you figure more things out. Um, I've got other videos that go over different bookkeeping tactics, different accounting tactics and so forth that you can find that might be helpful. Uh, otherwise, like I said, I also do consulting on this stuff, so I'd be happy to help if, if you got into it and you had some questions that might come up. So, hope to talk to you soon. Thanks a lot.